go, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's about to be a lit day today. Hey, let's get back to our swagger, come on. All of them get the dough down. That is the juggernaut. Hey, hey, welcome to the first edition of the Audible Podcast presented by Verizon. My name is Gabe Henderson alongside Ben Lieber. And Ben, I know fans are asking and are wondering, what is the Audible? Why are we sitting here in these two seats? And I got an answer for you. The Audible is a player-driven Vikings podcast bringing you guys closer to the team each and every week throughout the season this week. This year, we'll have Justin Jefferson, we'll have Michael Pierce, we'll have plenty of other player guests hosting this show alongside Ben Lieber and I. And we'll talk on the field, off the field content, and just, I won't say free for all. It's but fun. It's fun. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. It'll we'll, be do fun. A, we'll do a little bit of X's and O's for those hardcore people out there, but we also are going to have some content to get to know these players yeah. a little bit deeper. Um, so it's going to be. It's going to be a fun show. So it'll be an hour-long show on KFAN 100.3 that will air on Thursdays. And then on Fridays on Fox 9, it'll be a 30-minute TV show. So I'm excited. I'm so excited to get this going with you, Ben. Every single segment, unlike the first segment, we'll start with a trivia question. So I'm not going to start with the trivia question right here because I know you got to get out of here before yeah. Justin Jefferson joins. Of course, you, I heard you don't like the guy or something. What's, what's We've the... got some beef. You know, <laughs> he, and I, he and I go way back. Even though okay. we played in different eras, <laughs> K-State, LSU, we don't like each other. So, no, uh, unfortunately, um, we'll not be with him this week. Okay. But uh, count on me every, each and every week after that. Each and every week, Justin Jefferson will be here, I think, every three, every three, four, every four weeks from here on out. So I'm excited to get going. First topic today is week one, Cincinnati Bengals on the road. It's the first time since 2016 the Vikings have opened on the road. And you're familiar with being on the road in week one at Cincinnati at Paul Brown Stadium. Your rookie year in the NFL, mm -hmm. week one, you're playing for the San Diego Chargers. You guys won 34 to 6 against the Cincinnati Bengals. What do you remember about that game? Uh, I remember, I remember how nervous I was. Okay. <laughs> uh, I can tell you that it was nerve wracking. You know, you're, I was a rookie and any rookie that, that sort of cracks the starting lineup. Um, it's one thing to be told in practice, like, Hey dude, you're going to be with the ones this for today. And that, and that's kind of how it was approached by yeah. Marty Schottenheimer. It's like, we're going to give this a trial run. Yeah. Like figure this out. Yeah. We're going to figure some things out. We're going to let you go with the ones. And so I really thought it was just a temporary thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I never kind of went back down the depth chart. So then all of a sudden now we're getting ready for the game and it's just like, my family's going. So I got to deal with like <laughs> the tickets and, and all that stuff. And I'm just super nervous and, you know, excited, but you just don't know how you're going to stack up against, you know, true NFL competition outside of practice. Mm -hmm. And it was hot. Mm -hmm. I remember running down on kickoff and I get done with the very first rep of the season, my very first rep of my career. And I, I see stars. I'm like running. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm so like, tired. <laughs> like, it's so hot here. Like, how am I going to make it through this game where I just like sprinted for 50 yards yeah. and I'm, I'm already like exhausted. Mm. I think a lot of it was just nervous energy okay. um, and all that stuff because I was fine throughout the game. Um, but it was hot. It was humid. Um, and then I, I ended up getting my first sack against Gus Farratt, mm. who ends up being my Vikings teammate many years down the road. Um, so everything kind of came full circle. But in that moment, you know, it's funny, that particular play that they called a blitz, I, I run down a hill. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of elude the running back and, and my head was down. So I was like, yeah. my head was down. My attention was on the running back. I get past him like, oh, and, shoot. and all I, all I remember is the quarterback kind of making this motion. Mm -hmm. So as I'm like getting up and defeating the block, I thought he threw the ball. Mm -hmm. So then I, I just sort of like haphazardly like, <laughs> like run into him. Right. And then I, and I get the sack cause he pump faked and he held onto it. And I just kind of wrapped him up and took yeah. him to the ground. But it was hilarious and watching it on film because the guys were just killing me on Monday. They're like, what? what you hit the guy? Yeah, they're like, what were you doing? I'm like, I thought he threw the ball. I don't know. And they're like, you know, it was all it was all fun and game. Man, that's an interesting story. And just speaking of just the, the nervous energy that you have week one, whether you're in year one, year two, year three, and so on and so forth. I know on the offensive side of the ball, usually offensive players are saying, hey, you know, I can score a touchdown in the first two or three plays when I touch the ball. But until I get hit, like, I'm nervous. Yeah. What is it like on the defensive side of the ball? I think it's the same. Um, there have been many games where 
you know, let's say that you're, you open up with a passing team, and for whatever reason, my particular position as a linebacker, I just wasn't involved in a lot of action. Mm -hmm. you, you do feel out of it. You know, there, there's been games where it's, we've gone the whole first quarter, and I'm like, I, I don't even, I just feel like I'm floating out there. Yeah. And then you, you almost like intentionally want to go run into something. <laughs> You're like, I'm just going to go hit that offensive Somebody lineman yeah. just, just to kind of wake myself up. Um, <laughs> No, it's all the same. I think, mm -hmm. I think until you feel the, the impact and you just you know that you're in the game, that's when everything starts to click. Well, the players, they will feel the impact this upcoming Sunday. They will hear the impact that this Paul Brown Stadium crowd will have, uh, I guess, this minute, the Cincinnati Bengals 12th man of, of some sort. They'll feel that also mm -hmm. because fans are there. The energy will be there. We'll be on the road at the game. What are you most expecting from both of these teams? We were talking a little bit off camera, and, I mean, if you look at them on paper, it's kind of even. Yeah, it's like it's like you can look at this Bengals team and say, well, they've got they've got question marks with the interior offensive line. Well, you can direct that question right back at the Vikings. You know, I, I think everybody in Cincinnati, for everything that they're questioning about us, it's the same reflection on them. So I think it goes both ways. They had they had problems with the, their interior offensive line last year. They had problems stopping the run last mm -hmm. year. They had questions in the secondary. Um, now they have an injured they had an injured quarterback, which we didn't have. But there are a lot of question marks. You know, they're sort of breaking in a new kicker. Although he was perfect in the preseason, they feel pretty happy about him. We've had some kicking issues for many years. Mm -hmm. You know, so when it comes down to special teams, there's some question marks there. Mm -hmm. So um, I think both teams have a lot of talent, but for us in the Vikings, we haven't seen that talent play in the preseason. So we have all those same questions, but yet we didn't really get anything answered in the preseason. So I wanna see, I wanna see all those things come to fruition and make sure that we actually do have a really good team. Well, one question I got to answer earlier this week was who our right tackle of the future will be. Mm -hmm. Brian O'Neill signed an extension this week, five years worth 92 million. He's facing up against Trey Hendrickson, a guy from the Saints last year, they ended up with 13 and a half sacks. Mm -hmm. This Bengals defense, I think they spent over 200, over 200 million on their defense yeah. in the past three years. Trey Hendrickson is a guy that they're going to expect a lot of uh, production from. So when you look at that matchup on Sunday, how do you see things playing out there? Well, I imagine they're going to move him around too. Okay. You know, I, I think that they're going to they're going to try to move him around a little bit on third down uh, to try to find the best matchup for him. Um, but I. I'm going to favor Brian O'Neill in those one-on-one -on -one matchups. Mm -hmm. Like Brian O'Neill's faced everybody, you know. You know, we even heard this this uh, preseason how Von Miller from mm -hmm. Denver, who they had that extended practice time with them before leading up to the, the preseason game, you know, applauded, you know, Brian O'Neill. Best right tackle in the game. Yeah, just saying like he's he's one of the best. Yeah. And and when you have a guy like Vaughn who has you know, beaten everybody in the league yeah. and you know, is a phenomenal player. When he goes against him in practice and they're like, hey man, you got my respect. I think you're one of the best in the league. I'm going to take our chances with one of the best in the league versus Trey Hendrickson. Defense is out of the ball. A lot of veterans on this Vikings defense. This Bengals offense still trying to figure things out. I know we said, you know, we'll take our running back committee versus their running back committee, yeah. but their running back committee versus our front seven. Your thoughts? Well, again, we, we don't know. Hmm. We don't know. We saw, we saw some bits and pieces of Tomlinson and Pierce in the preseason, and I think they looked phenomenal. Yeah. I, I think the thing that they did a really good job of was they not only defeated the block and handled the blocks in front of them, they played with extension and separation. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is they, they had great hat and hands, and they controlled the offensive linemen by extending their arms, and they were able to kind of peek around, play their gap, but then also get off and make plays. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's necessarily all about, like, they have to chew up double teams. Mm -hmm. We've got two guys in there that can be playmakers, mm -hmm. along with Sheldon Richardson. So, yes, they can defeat the blocks, and they can chew up gaps, but also they can get off those blocks and make some plays. So I'm really excited about what those guys can do. You know, their running, their running style is very very much downhill yeah and I, and I think that that's going to play well for us yeah because things are going to declare like this yeah. when you have guys kind of like our scheme where a guy might take it front side and hit it back side mm -hmm. you got to be a little more disciplined and read so much but when you know that ball is coming downhill right now quick it's it's a hit pop get off and make a play right. so I think uh, our front seven matches up very well against them all right so Paul Allen earlier this week said he's expecting three sacks from this defense he mm -hmm. said Daniel Hunter might get three you said well, he said, he said six total. Daniel's going to get three yeah. himself. Oh, my. 
if, if that's the case, I don't think anybody would be upset about that. Joe Burrow was sacked 15 times in two games last year. Yeah. He played 10 games last year and was sacked 32 times. So the opportunity will be there. It's just a fact of us making the plays when the opportunity presents itself. So just the overall sack versus interception. You got a prediction at all? Well, I, had, I have a prediction with Breland. I think Breland's going to get at least one interception. Okay. I think it's right for, for him to use his skills that he possesses as far as being a really tight coverage guy, um, closing off a lot of windows. And, you know, he's got some dog in him. Like, yeah, he I, he's going to go after that ball. He's going to try to make plays on the ball. He's going to use his instincts. And he's not afraid to make mistakes. And I think as a corner, you have to have that. Mm -hmm. So I think he walks away with at least one. This offense for Cincinnati, they would be smart to not have a lot of drop back, to not have a lot of five and seven step. They know that they've got a quarterback that's coming off a knee injury. Get the ball out of his hands quick. Quick. You know, are we going to have an opportunity to get some sacks? Yes, it's probably going to have to come off a of play action. Our guys going to have to guess right. Mm -hmm. We're going to have the right blitz off a of play action. Um, and or our offense is going to have to put some points on the board early and force them into deeper drops and force them to get the ball down the field and have more time in the pocket. That's the only way I think that we can, we can get to him because I think the wise thing to do for him and for that offense and for longevity of, of this season for Joe Burrow is ball out quick, ball out quick, ball out quick. three step, get your hands up. Maybe, maybe some deflections and PBUs from the guys up front, but maybe early on, I don't see as many sacks. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what the purple will do at Paul Brown stadium this week. I know you got to get out of here. I know you want to get out of here before Justin Jefferson gets here. So I, <laughs> I won't hold you any longer, but thank you again, man. I, I mean, every single week from here on out. Yeah, man, we're going to be doing this every week. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have guests. We're going to have fun content. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we're going to laugh and smile a lot. And I hope you guys as listeners laugh and smile with us. And, um, you know, we've got uh, 16 more of these to do. 16 more. And that's a minimum because mm. I think that we're going to have some playoff ones, playoff mm. episodes as well. Well, we'll get your predictions on that later in the year. Ben Lieber, see you next time. Thanks, Gabe. We'll be right back with Justin Jefferson and our special guest, his brother, Jordan Jefferson, right here on The Audible, presented by Verizon. What's one thing that Justin can't live without? I already know what he's about to say. Oh, video game. I knew he was about to see that. <laughs> let's go, bring it up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. It's about to be a lit day today. Hey, let's get back to our swagger. Come on. All of them get the dough down. That is the juggernaut. Yo, welcome back to The Audible presented by Verizon. My name is Gabe Henderson from the Vikings Entertainment Network. And as promised, we got the second year phenom wide receiver, Justin Jefferson. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. Good to, good to be here and good to uh, go to year two with, with some confidence. You got some confidence and you got big bro behind you. Yes, sir. As I mean, physically support, but literal support also in joining <laughs> this conversation. Jordan, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, <laughs> doing fabulous. Always a good day. What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. And I know uh, we were talking a little off camera. If you don't know who Jordan Jefferson is, I'm going to give you a quick rundown because this guy appeared in the national championship as a quarterback at LSU. He was a starting quarterback from 2008 to 2011. Of course, he was signed by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as an undrafted free agent in 2012. And most importantly, he's from Louisiana. And I know People from the boot love the boot. No, no. That's, that's home. <laughs> I know you're up here in Minnesota now, and now you got your brother here putting, putting numbers up and putting numbers out. But before we get to the football talk, we, we, we got to start this, this segment off with the trivia question. Jordan, Justin, Jordan, from here on out, every single segment, we start with the trivia question. So question number one. Y'all ready? Yeah, of course. Both of y'all seem a little nervous right now. Hey, man, I'm just <laughs> waiting for the question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How many current LSU Tigers are on, this, are on the Cincinnati Bengals roster? A, one, B, two, C, three, D, four. D, four. Let's go with D, four. Talk to me. Names, I need some names. All right, we got Joe Burrow. Okay. We got Jamar Chase, Tyler Shelvin, and Thad Moss, Thaddeus Moss. You on it. We got my dudes, man. <laughs> hey, I know my dudes. I know where my dudes go at, so, <laughs> hey, I know. So you got the opportunity to be on the same field as these guys. I know y'all call it NFLSU. Yeah. That, that's, the, that's the term. Yeah. And now you get a chance to be all be on this. I think it's what, seven players on the same field this week? If you seven. include Danil and P2. 
Uh, Jordan, I mean, you played, didn't you play with P2 at some point? Absolutely. Uh, me and Patrick were roommates. Wow. So being roommates and having JJ, I know we, are, we all heard the story a couple of times. JJ's in the, the dorm room, yeah. you know, dorm running routes <laughs> with you and P2, playing coverage every now and then. But just having him, you know, watch every single step that you make, of course, as long as, as well as your brother, Ricky, what was that like for you? Uh, it was pretty good. I, um, you know, I, I met Patrick early in my, uh, like, coming out of high school. I knew about him coming from Florida because, I, honestly, once you commit, you start to pay attention to the class. So I met Patrick at the spring game, and we we, we connected instantly. So throughout, throughout time, you know, I, I start to learn more about his family. He learned more about mine. And, obviously, Ricky and Justin had a strong interest in football. And... My parents were very, very supportive. My family was very supportive. They always came to a lot of the games. So Justin was able to spend a lot of time, a lot of personal time around players, around guys like Patrick that were able to see him as, as a very young age. So uh, we used to sit in the dorm rooms all the time and talk about, uh, you know, my younger brother's Little League football games, high school football games, and to see uh, both of these guys on the same team at the same time, man. It's it's, it's a very exciting uh, moment for myself because I know where the connection first started. Well, I think the connection between you, Ricky, and JJ is your is your mom's cheesecake. <laughs> you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta talk about that a little bit because I, I've heard about the cheesecake on like I've heard about it on yeah. like three different occasions. Talk to me. Crazy part is. Every well, most people in my family can pretty much cook. So, yeah. uh, so my dad would be doing all of the, like the gumbos, <laughs> the crawfish, uh, crawfish etouffee, like uh -huh. all of the big dishes. And uh, my mom and my uh, aunt would be doing like the cookies, the cakes, <laughs> the cheesecakes, uh, all of the desserts. Really, and uh, oh my God, it's amazing. Every holiday we have, we have the cheesecake, and we have like the different cakes, caramel cake. Oh my God! Crazy, bro. Crazy. Tastes amazing. So the way you're talking about this food, it sounds like you should have been playing linebacker. Should have, but look at me. It's crazy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, I'm I'm the baby brother in my family. So I, my brother has a as being an older brother, he has plenty of stories about me that I probably won't tell people, but he's not embarrassed to tell people. So. I need just uh, not an embarrassing story, but just a funny <laughs> story about Justin that not many people know about. Funny stories. Um, this is when the NCAA college football game was out. And it was a, a very, uh, you know, like a lot of kids liked it. So I used to come home uh, during, say, spring, during the spring holiday or Christmas holidays. And I would just spend time at the house and Justin will be playing NCAA football. Well, when he's playing NCAA football, there was a Kanye West album, right? <laughs> and this dude will be playing NCAA football <laughs> to 3, 4 in the morning, singing every word of the 808's Heartbreak album. And it used to be so funny to the point to where I would jump in and start singing it with him. So one of his, one of his favorite albums back then was the 808's Heartbreak by Kanye West. Oh man! So that means I know you heard Donda listen. I mean, yeah, that's on re rotation yeah. right now. <laughs> that's funny. That's hilarious. All right, Jordy, how would you describe Justin as a kid in one word? Energetic. <laughs> and the reason the reason why I said uh, the reason why I say that because you know he was always fond of going outside, uh, playing ball in the yard, or just actively doing things around the house. Mm, man, so what's one thing that Justin can't live without? And I'll have you answer this question, I, too. I already know what he about to say. Oh, uh, video games. I knew he was about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> what, you, what you playing right now? I've been on that duty hard. I ain't going to count. But I've been on the Madden a little bit, too. Uh, I've been playing Jordan at the crib and Madden. So we... We've been going back and forth lately. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get up on them. So are, are you the type that play with the Vikings and then boost your ratings up to like 99 and then just throw to yourself every play? I used to do that. <laughs> <laughs> when yeah, I was small, I definitely used to do that. But uh, now that I'm already on the game, okay. uh, I don't really have to. So uh, I just go and franchise and just, you know, build it mm -hmm. up.
What about you, George? But definitely throws the balls to itself. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, and you still don't stop it. Played, and you still don't stop it. The, the last game we played, he probably had five receptions for 105 yards, two touchdowns. <laughs> and I was a bit aggravated because I couldn't stop it. <laughs> I mean, I don't think nobody would complain if that happened this Sunday. Hey, five I'm catches, sure <laughs> I'm sure. Not. I'm sure Vikings fans not <laughs> not complaining either. I, I mean, out of the three brothers, who who was the worst at keeping a secret? I feel like I can I can answer this, but I'll I'll let Jordan answer this first. Uh, the worst at keeping a secret, um, I'll probably have to say Ricky. <laughs> I had to say Ricky too. I I was the quiet one really. I wasn't. I was the one saying much. Yeah, just because he's the middle brother and he, I guess, gets consumed with a lot of information. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we end this segment, I got three rapid fire questions for both of you guys. Question number one, what was Justin's favorite player growing up? Uh, you had the Kyrie Irving post on the wall. You had the LeBron James post on your wall. Um, Randy Moss. Um, I, I'll stop it at those three. Favorite meal? Meal? Yeah. I have to go with that crawfish etouffee. Different. When my dad cooked it, it's different. Every time. What makes it different? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I need to ask him. Because <laughs> it is different every time. And he knows, like, that's my favorite thing. Like, he knows, like, if he comes to where I'm at, yeah. that's the thing to cook. I said, I think it has to do with like the spices combination, you know, and we definitely had crawfish etouffee, I think was at the, at the beginning of August, right? Mm -hmm. He just came over here and made it, so. Oh, so that's, that's why, that's why you had a, a crazy camp the way you did this yeah. year. Okay, you got to <laughs> get the spices in, add that to the game. Got that Louisiana add, food, <laughs> I'm good now. Add that to the repertoire, but. <laughs> well, always a pleasure talking to Jordan and Justin. I wish Ricky was here, but maybe next time we'll have him on, but. Uh, Justin, always a pleasure. Best of luck on Sunday. I'm just, like you, like your brother said, five catches, 105 yards. I think that that might be the the standard going forward. That's so. a standard. That's a standard. That's the lowest we can go. <laughs> Any high, we good. Awesome, man. Well, Vikings fans, thank you for tuning into the first edition of the Audible. Next week, we'll have another special guest. Can't give that away right now, but you will be seeing <laughs> Justin Jefferson again. See you next week. Peace out. <laughs>